Hello, my name is Clive from Clive's Art and welcome and thank you for joining me in the studio again today. Um, I've had a lot of emails and questions relating to this particular subject. I don't know how many lessons I'm going to spread this over but they will be um, put up during the months um, up until the end of the year really. So I might, I'll, I'll do them as I, as I think of them. Um, basically it comes down to depth and perspective in a painting and composition. Now this is quite a complicated lengthy subject and I don't want to bore you with lengthy videos at all. But what I want to try and get across is if you think about it in its simplest terms, you know, stand outside and have a look at the if you, if you buy mountains or fields and things like that or whatever and go and stand outside somewhere find somewhere even if you go um, for a little walk somewhere with a dog or whatever I don't know and you'll notice in the distance things look a lot lighter and uh, paler and more misty and a lot bluer um, the further away things are the lighter they seem to be but as they come towards you they get a little bit darker in gradients now when we do in paintings um, especially landscapes um, we need to get the the painting to look as if it's going in like that so we need that perception of depth now I've covered this subject a few times um, I've done a perspective video um, which was quite simple because I did it on a picture frame with a felt tip marker and I just touched on the subject really and I done other videos then that to show you how to paint you know depth um, but what I've got here is um, a painting that I've done. It's, it's not finished. All I've done is basically painted depth. And I want to show you that now. And I'm going to explain to you how I did that, why I did that, and the effect you'll get from it. So I'm just going to get the canvas that I've done up onto the easel. And this is something that I painted um, a few days ago. And, and I just wanted to do a representation of depth. Now, as you can see, um, there's, there's mountains in the background, there's grass, and there's a sky. So this is basically a landscape but broken down into its little, minute, simplistic way. And um, have a little closer look, and I'll explain to you exactly what I mean. So looking at the canvas, if you notice the sky, forget the clouds, just the colour of the blue. It's a lot darker across the top and it fades down as we get lower and closer to that horizon. The horizon line is roughly about halfway but as we get down to that horizon line it gets a lot lighter. So that's going to give you a gradient of blue that you've got and um, that already gives you that feeling of depth there. And it's the same with the grass area. If you notice down here um, it's a lot darker in the foreground and I've, and I've just gone up slightly on the edges there. Bit of a vignette look. But as I go into that horizon line, the further I go away from where I am, it goes lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter right up to that horizon line. <clears throat> the other thing is the clouds. Now if you look at the clouds, they're a lot more fluffy and a little bit more detail in them. But as these clouds go further away from you, as we discussed in other videos, you will see them getting smaller and smaller and smaller until they look as if they've all blended into one group of clouds. Again, that is giving you the depth perception. And the final thing is on the mountains. Sorry, I just did the hair there and it's really annoying me. If you notice the distant mountains are so pale and they're very blue and you notice as they come in forward they're getting slightly darker and again these are in front of those they're getting slightly darker and the ones in the foreground are darker again and then if you wanted to put some trees in you they would be very small distant very light colored trees when you wanted to bring them forward you could increase the size but increase the color so basically what I'm saying is lighter on the horizon line and getting slowly darker to the top of the canvas and again lighter and getting slowly darker to the foreground and 
everything looks as if it's going away from you. That's it. Simples. And that's all you've got to remember is that gradient going down to light and that gradient from dark going back to light. So the further things come towards you, the darker they're going to become. And that's as simple as that. Now the next thing we've got to look at is perspective. Perspective is a little bit more complicated because you've got one point perspective, two point perspective, three point, four point. It all depends at the end of the day how many things you want to fade into the background. So say if I was just building a building here and the vanishing point was down there, then all those lines would follow to that point and then I can just draw my building in, including the windows and the doors, etc, etc. Um, the same with trees, distance, obviously they're going to be bigger here going down into size. So everything really is relative to that point. So let's have a little look at what I mean. Now I'm going to put a piece of glass onto my easel and I should have cleaned this really first, but you'll see what I mean in just one second. The reason I'm doing it is because I want this, I want to use this canvas um, for a painting really when I finish doing the tutorial. And I could use tracing paper, but it's expensive and I didn't want to do that. So I thought if I use a dry marker on a piece of glass, we might get a better effect. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is get a rule and a dry wipe marker. Give me one second, I'll be back. One rule, one dry white mark. Now, a horizon's not always necessarily in the center of a painting. Um, they could be lower or they could be higher. It all depends on that particular subject. In this case, it is slightly below center. Now, to find the center of your canvas, um, I'll just use a piece of glass. You go from corner to corner. Oops. <laughs> it's a bit slippery. Corner to corner, find the corners, and then you draw that line straight down there. And again, opposite to corner to corner. This is not going to be 100% accurate for me. But then you'll draw another line there and there. And then where those lines intersect is where you need to draw your line. Now you can use a pencil, watercolour pencil, or you can even use a bit of masking tape. So that's basically how you find your horizon line. Now if you want to move that line up and down, that's entirely up to you, depending on the subject. And anywhere on this line would be a vanishing point. So that's a horizon line. So you can pick any point on that horizon line to be your vanishing point. So with that in mind, let's just say we wanted to put a road somewhere into our landscape. And you can see why I'm using a dry white marker now. This is brilliant, isn't it? Um, so less for argument's sake, it could be a river. Yeah, why? It could be a river. So say we pick that centre line there as our vanishing point. So we know then that from, let's take rid of that, let's get rid of the mark stick. We can take a vanishing point from there to the corner, and from there to that corner. Now, with roads and rivers and things, you'll be very surprised, and I've said this in the past and other videos, how much of the canvas that would actually take up. Now, if you wanted to do a river and you wanted it to be moved, moving, you, you, could, you could move it around, but you've got to stay on that line there to understand what I mean. So you could still get a river in place with some wiggly wiggly banks and then I'm just using this as an example my glass is going to fall and break I don't want that to do that okay there we are. you'll see what I mean it is basically following those lines 
to the varnish in point. Right, I'm just going to sort that out. One second. In a mag. Use a bit of blue tack just to secure the bottom of the glass. So let's say we draw a line there and then a line there. And that's going to be a path. Now, if we wanted to put flagstones in that path, then we would measure down and as they get in further away they're getting closer together and closer together closer together closer together so they have to disappear and these are going to be vertical horizontal <laughs> vertical new no. horizontal a bit like railway tracks so these could be the sleepers in between. I'm not going to use a ruler because it's going to take too long for me to do that. But as you can see, as they get in further away, they're getting closer together, closer together, and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, 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 so if we were going to use um, flagstones, then you would have to take those down to the vanish end points. So we'll miss one, miss one, miss one, miss one, miss one. And then another one then, see there. So we'll miss one, miss one, miss one, miss one, and so forth. I'm going to do one more. So let's do some in between them now. So we go in between, in between, in between, in between, in between. You get the effect. So these lines have got to go to the vanishing point. These lines are horizontal. So these are horizontal planes. All they're all planes. So now, okay. So without getting too complicated let me say if um, say I wanted to put a person in there you go say I wanted to put a person walking down the road as we've said before and See, he's five foot eleven. We know now that if we were going to put um, a tree here, which is obviously taller than the man, depending on what type of tree, but let's just say double the height. So that's halfway. So it's going to be on the same plane. So it's on the same line as him, the plane line. So it's going to be there, but it's going to be double the height. So we need to go at least that height. And then we put we put a tree in. Now, we know that's correct. And we can carry things across here now to that size. So obviously... If there's going to be another tree there, say on that line there, so we put another tree in here, it's not going to be as big. And then we could put another tree there, another tree there. So as they go into the distance, they get smaller and smaller and smaller until they just dots, basically. And if we're going to put another man there, say his wife, let's make a bit of room, say his wife was walking there, so she's going to be half height of that tree. So her head is going to be like that. And she's walking there. She's got a dog. There we are. So that is going to the vanishing point also. 
And as I said, the further she walks away or he walks away, the smaller they'll get till they disappear into the into the distance. So I hope that's been of use. Now if we wanted to put a building here, say, so let's put let's put a building in here. And we're looking at this straight on so it's going to be that edge is going to be flat to us but this part of the building is disappearing into the distance this line is going to be straight and this line is going to be straight these are on an angle and then again with the the windows, the top of the windows have got to follow that line there to the vanishing point, straight line, straight line. And again with the door, top of the door follows that line. These are dead straight and then you're going to have a path coming straight out. And they would be dead straight. Um, there you go. Put a bush there, and, and then we take those lines away. And we know that that is correct. We go in to the vanishing point. Yeah. So that's um, one point perspective now you might be saying well, what was two point perspective then well it's basically two vanishing points on the same line it's as simple as that it's not over complicated now the difference between one point perspective and two point perspective in this particular instance all my lines are, seem to be converging to one point one point perspective so everything seems to be going there also all the composition of my particular painting or drawing on this canvas is vanishing to one point so if you've come across something like that and everything seems to be going <whistles> narrowing to a point then that's a one point perspective so I'm just gonna clean off the glass and then we're gonna discuss very simply and very quickly a two point perspective and exactly the same way as we did before. Let me check out in the bin. Bob on. Hey, first time. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Keep an eye out for my weekly updates. Join me on Facebook. They, they're always there. And they'll let you know what's coming up in that particular week. So may you God be go with you. I'm Clive from Paisad. Take care. Thank you very much. And don't forget to give me that thumbs up. And subscribe if you haven't already done so. Bye-bye.